everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I'm back with part two. We are making a mini lunch bag journal. So in part one, I showed you how to fold just a regular lunch bag into this. We've got a nice tuck spot, got a little flip. We added another little, let's see, tuck spot here. Some, a belly band, pockets, different things. And that's about as far as we got. And normally when I do a part one and a part two, I clean everything up and I do it a day or two later. And today I turned the camera off. I went to the bathroom <laughs> and, and I'm back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and film right on through and then I'll get these edited and up in the next couple of days. So I definitely want to make a, a fun closure. And I'm thinking a button. I'm gonna pull, I, again, same rules. Whoa, I am only using things that I can reach here in my craft room. So it's a good thing I have lots of things I can reach, right? And, oh look, it's a little, it's a little pumpkin I made out of buttons. And then I wasn't really happy with it, so it's just sitting here in my button bin, or one of my button bins. So, there you go. Don't always like everything I make. There's a little butterfly that I made a while back. I think I showed you guys how to make those. Let's see, different things end up in different places in my craft room. If one of these fun buttons would work. Those are just some of these wood ones with floral patterns. You can get those on Amazon. I have a whole bunch of them. I'm just trying to see. I was looking to see was there something kind of blue that might work. That's a blue one. But I don't know. I have more buttons. This one is like a baseball. I have no idea when I'm ever going to use that. I just saw something blue. Ooh, I kind of like that one. I think it technically goes this way. I don't know what it says, but if we turn it upside down, that blue's kind of pretty. Let's set these aside and just pick one. I'm just gonna pick one. And I didn't even get my needle and thread ready. Let's see. This needle, it has some of that gold thread when I was doing some Christmas crafting. We could sew it on with a piece of gold thread. I think there's enough here, if I'm very careful. I say that and making my life probably more complicated. But I like different kinds of closures for journals and but this is definitely one of my go-tos. I love a button that you can then wrap like a piece of twine or a piece of ribbon around for your closure. So we're gonna go for that. Let's see. This piece may not be long enough now that I said that. Let's not, let's not make life difficult. Let's get just a piece of thread out and sew the button of our choice on and move on. I can use some of that gold flossy thread somewhere else later if I decide to. So we are going to work on this closure. I am going to make from my scraps here a few probably journaling cards or little tags, little pieces of ephemera. We'll decorate the pockets or the pages just a touch and it'll be done and it'll be fun for someone to add add more more to at some point. Okay, we're gonna see the button on this side. So this little blue one is really speaking to me, even over that blue one. So let's go. We're gonna use the button upside down. We'll put those back in the little button tray. A lot of times I just kind of decide where I think it's gonna look good, and then I use the button to help me get my first hole going. Even though this is multiple layers of cardstock and the little brown paper bag, I don't need to pre, you know, pre-poke the holes with like a my paper piercer. 
my needle is going through okay. All right, so it's just like sewing a button on fabric, but it's very hard to line up the hole from this side. So I just, just make a little hole so I know where I'm going. Probably could have doubled this thread over. Okay. And I'm going to stitch it a few more times just to make sure we hold her on nice and securely. So do you guys like to sew on paper? I love to sew on paper, whether I do it by hand like this or if I use my sewing machine. Most of my tutorials, I don't have, you know, a lot of sewing, like sewing machine sewing because I haven't figured out how to, <laughs> I haven't figured out how to film myself sewing. And sometimes I will sew something off camera before I get started and then use that element as part, or if I do a part one and a part two occasionally, I'll do that with my sewing machine. But something's gotta give. I either have to learn how to edit my videos a little bit so that I could stop videoing, hop over to my sewing machine, sew it really quick, and then come back and we can keep going, or I have to figure out how to have my sewing machine on camera so maybe in 2025 maybe that'll be something I work on or look into when my daughter the photographer is home at Christmas I may have her look at how I have this my setup and see if she can come up with some suggestions for me too <laughs> but it just hasn't been a priority even though I do like sewing in my journaling I don't do it a lot with my tutorials. And not everybody has a sewing machine and not everybody wants to sew. I get that too, so. All right, cute little button now. Sewing on paper, even though it is sewn on, I still wanna be gentle with it. And I don't wanna to pull too, too much or too hard because you know it'll pop right through that paper and tear off, so. But even that just gives it a nice little look. I will put some twine on it in a little bit. I do think I'm going to punch a circle, maybe this size. I never know what size this circle is, and just cover those threads up. They don't really bother me. I'm okay with them there, but we'll just get a little bit of paper contrast. So I can either use a little bit of that green, because I have green here, or I can go with the orange. I'm going to leave the green up just to be a little different now that I threw that on the floor. Let me pick it up. Actually landed in my lap. And I'm using my same glue. Now, if you didn't watch part one, you might want to hop over and watch part one so you can see how I use the lunch bag to make this little journal. Because today is really just the fun part of going through and making some journaling cards and some doodads and things. This one's going to be too big because I glued that. But I think this card will fit in this big pocket nicely. It'll slide right in there. So I'm going to add a little ink. And... The orange flower, I think, helps pull a little bit of this together, too, which is kind of fun. And you know what might be cute? Is let's add a, the butterfly to it, just to give a little extra interest, since I found the butterflies. How about right there? I'll just glue the butterfly. And that pocket is roomy, so it can take, you know, some items that have a little bit of thickness to them, like the butterfly will add. Go. Get that bottom layer down. So these, I have a video, and you can you can actually search my content. I don't know if you guys know that, but on YouTube. So I don't remember what I called these, but butterfly buttons or something. And we did some with just butterfly punches, and then I actually have some wooden butterfly buttons, and we made some of those in a video. So go back and watch that if you like those butterflies. All right. <laughs> 
So I have something in there. Now I need something quite tiny in this one, and I think I wanna decorate this pocket just a little. So let me pull out um, my little ephemera folder here. I haven't been doing a great job of putting my new little pieces and scraps in. That's not my strong suit. <laughs> but I loved making this. We made I made this in a video too. And I know several of y'all have made one because you've left me a comment and told me we'll add some more butterflies that you made made one. So I made this size and then I made the big one with the file folders. So again, uh, if you see that and that is of interest to you, you could run and watch that video too. There's so much fun content. And I hope you guys will go back if you haven't. If you know, if you haven't been with me for a while and you haven't gone back and looked at some of my older content, I hope you'll take the time to do that. Again, all those kind of little things help smaller channels like mine start to get discovered because it shows people are interested in my content and like what they're seeing and even going back to the older stuff. Okay, this is a piece of that book page and I don't want it to get swallowed up, but I think it's a good size as a base for a tag that can go in that little pocket right there. And it could have, it could be even a little bit taller. It could hang, hang past this little pop-out page because it's more narrow than the full page. So let's think of what we might want to do and look. Isn't that cute? That's just a little piece. And I think if I layer it right on top of this book page, it'll give it a nice thickness and it will look interesting. And I have another idea too that I might even just staple it. Make it like a little, a little scrappy, a little scrappy to put right in there. Cute, right? Yeah, I like it, I like it. This we're gonna use for some journaling. I think I'm gonna leave the collage dictionary paper just as something to look at. Mind, let's see if we can find another little tag or something and I might want something for this pocket as well. Maybe like a little, a little number. And I haven't looked at this in a while. Like I said, I need to grab <laughs> my newer bits and bobs and pieces that are piling up around my desk and add them so I have more things to look at and to use. That would be cute. Let's see. And here's some numbers and things. Even if we have to cut them out just a little bit, that's okay. All right. So I'm trying to think of other things to tell you guys. Again, it's still Monday. <laughs> so if you watched part one and now you're watching part two, it filmed on the same day. I think I'm doing it early enough in the day that it won't get too dark. I did a video the other day and I was losing my light. And then my husband, he's so sweet, he was watching it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it got really dark. So with it being winter time, I'm trying to be a little more aware of that and what time I start filming a video because I was fine at the beginning but no one's complained so that's a good thing all right so other strange things that I was thinking about is I think you know just like the other social medias YouTube has bots you know so like that maybe follow you and then unfollow you or leave weird comments but i've been getting some very strange comments from a youtube account and i've been deleting them so it's not a big deal if it's you sorry um but they're just like what i would describe as very cryptic you know just like random streams of consciousness that have nothing to do with my videos and i don't really get it so i've just been deleting it. If I don't, when I'm in my, and when I'm in my account, YouTube keeps prompting me to respond, you know, because I get your, your comments and they keep them in the comments that I haven't responded to, which is a great tool. It's so helpful because I like to respond to y'all's comments. 
and to hear what you're saying. And I do read all of them. And if I ever miss responding to a comment, it's just an honest mistake because I really do try to respond to all of them. So my only option, if I'm not going to respond like to a bot or something, is to delete it or remove it. And because I'm not 100% sure, I haven't like reported the account and I haven't done anything like that. But it's just very strange. So that's something that's been going on lately. And it just started in the last few days. Not quite sure what that's about. Okay, I like these little butterflies too. And again, I was wanting something to decorate or to add to this little belly band. I don't know if I'm going to like this or not, but again, just grabbing a random scrap off of my table. I think I'll just glue that on there. And I'm going to want something, of course, to put under the belly band. So, oh, I had this out earlier and I said, oh, here's a cute little journaling card. I might stack it with that one. Even though I like having some of the blue start to bring, bring it through. It was a little small for this space and it takes, it fits in that pocket delightfully. All right, here's some cute little birds. I don't know what digital kit these are from, I apologize my memory on where all of these different pieces have come from fade. Some of these scraps have been in the bin, you know, for a while, well over a year, I'm sure. And then some are newer. I tried to pull from deep in the bin. So it was things I haven't maybe crafted with recently. Definitely not my Christmas papers. I, I said that. Uh, and I was attempting to get to some of the older stuff. So I don't really remember all of it. And that's not a bad thing. This is from one of my, these are from some, one of my paper kits. I need this to be a little bit bigger, not just like the banner. So I was thinking about mounting it on something, maybe two somethings. Maybe we'll just make, we're just gonna make something for this. All right, torn edge, and just make us a little bitty card to put these this bird banner on. And even opened the ink yet. This is again just my walnut distress ink. That's my favorite of the browns. <laughs> okay. Goodness gracious! Now I'm kind of wishing I had taken the time that's pretty, to maybe clear my desk off just a touch, my workspace. But I was like, nah, you can do it. Just go for it, Pam. All right, I am going to, these are just two strips of paper. Neither of them was wide enough for what I wanted. We're pulling out that masking tape again, because again, we can write on the back of this, right over top of that masking tape. And I don't want that sticky part of the tape there. Let's see if I can use some masking tape. Again, kind of as a decor element, <laughs> as a decoration, but also to take some of that stickiness. All right, I think we're good. And now I'm gonna add the bird right there and then put something across the top. And it's going to be very uh, scrappy, very much a junk journal-y kind of style of something. All right. And then what do I want to put across the top? Ooh, how about, let's see what I have in here. Maybe some lace, a little piece of lace. I've got a lot of Christmas ribbon going on. There's a different piece of lace. Let's see what looks good. I kind of am liking this, even though it's quite big. I don't know, I think it's too deep. We will, how about I put this on here, but we'll attach it in the back. Or, you know what, I'm gonna staple it. Let's see what happens if I just staple it on. Whoa. All right, cute. 
I like it. We got a little piece flipping up right there. I'm just going to trim it off a little. There we go. Cute. I like it. Now, is it too tall for my, my belly band? It is. Oh, but I love it, and I don't want to trim it up. So why don't we stick it right there? There we go. And we'll make something else <laughs> for that belly band spot. I was like, I want it to be bigger and not too tiny. And I made it too big. This page needs a little decoration too. How about we put the butterfly right there? Glue, glue, glue. Okay. Fun. And I was thinking after I turned off the video and I said, oh, we're already about like 45 minutes. I probably could have kept going and just made it about an hour long video, but that's okay. Now we'll have something else for another day for you guys to watch during this very busy season I find myself in. Okay, something to put in with the belly band. It's like a clock. This looks like some of the papers. Ooh, another bird. That, or some Alice in Wonderland papers. All right, the bird it is. It's going to fit in there nicely. Now, this is from a Graphic 45 paper kit, and I love that paper kit and all of those papers. So we definitely are going to find a place to put a, at least a little piece of that. Okay, we have that. How about we'll put another little label on there? Because we can. All right. So you guys seemed to really like, I'm gonna just put it on the belly band. It's not working, it's too big for the label. You guys really seem to like the idea of this series with the lunch bags. Someone, Lisa, I think it was you, requested videos using some flat paper bags, which I think is a great idea, but I need to find some flat paper bags. And I think I have some, but... And so before I order any or go shopping, I'm really going to try to look and see what I have. I'm just going to make a little tiny tab like that out of this piece of copy dyed paper. So I think that's close enough to a lunch bag that I may add it in here or just do a standalone video for that. But I still have some other ideas of things we can do with lunch bags. So if you're still interested and you want me to keep going, let me know. I think there's still plenty we can do together using single lunch bags or multiple lunch bags to make journals. So let me know how you're thinking, how you're feeling about that. Guys, I love this little journal. I think whoever ends up playing with it is going to have a good time. It definitely, I'm going to skip putting a signature in. I just think it'll be too, too thick and it won't be able to really hold. And I do want the closure to work. I could have tried to make the closure have a wider gusset there that it wraps around, but I'm going to, I didn't. So this is what we're going to work with. I think I'm gonna decorate the front just a little, and I did talk about wanting a piece of this somewhere, just because I love it. Ooh, yeah, why not? I'm just gonna glue it down. It'll be pretty under here, and you can kind of see it with the flap down as well. It's a pop of vibrant color right here, and flowers, which I love and you get a little sliver of it. When these flowers are down, let's put a little, this little tab, label tag right there, and I'm thinking about the front. If I just wanna do some kind of ribbon closure or if I want to decorate the front before I think about the closure some more with that cute button we found. 
All right. I do think when you just start adding some of these fun little labels and bits and bobs, everything starts to look really cute. I like it. Again, do we want some kind of cluster here? Is it going to get in the way? It's certainly the cover, I don't think, leads anyone to imagine what you're going to find inside. You know, there's so many fun things to look at and very eclectic. Hmm. Just giving it a little thought before I make a decision. Like I said, if I can think of the right the right thing or find little pieces that speak to me. I definitely think it could look cute. These are those bingo numbers. This was definitely, and there was that piece. This is definitely from a Pink Monarch kit. It may have been the one, the monthly kit called Bingo Parlor is what I'm thinking. I'm just cutting it out a little bit. Again, maybe to try to give just a little bit of a hint or a peek of what you're gonna find inside. You get some different of the some of the colors. Whoa, that didn't tear the way I wanted it to. The colors that we're gonna see, we could do one of these kind of clusters. And we have that dictionary. I do need some type of element to go on the front. So a lot of these in this little bin are Christmas, but there are some that are just kind of like numbers. Here's an oval. All right, the oval's not working for me. Get that off of there. But, you know, there's some pieces like this. This was those... I think Pink Monarch has some different number tags and things that are, you can get them in like red and green and the neutral. And I just love having them on hand to layer with. There's another butterfly. La -da -da. And then I also have a bunch of pieces from the Christmas add-on kit that they put out this month, and I've been using it too in my Christmas crafts. So fun. All right, I just found an owl. I found that. This is all just me digging through all of the scraps that I yanked out. Oh, there's another little journaling card. We could tuck it in somewhere. La -de -da, what am I finding? Trying to stay with just this one set of book page um, scraps. Scrappy scraps. Okay. I don't think I want my Cricut obviously cut that out. I did not cut that little loopy paper out by hand. Let's see if I can make this work. And if not, we will move on. I was just thinking if I can make the cover a little more scrappy looking junk journally, like the inside, it gives a little better sense of the type of journal it is. Not that, you know, you have to judge a book by its cover, right? And we certainly don't have to, we can be surprised. But let's see, let me get a little bit of ink here. I definitely love the little vintagey dictionary page. Sometimes I do little clusters like this and even staple them together and then have them on hand. I wanted a little more of that green. All right, this is gonna close like that and it's gonna look like this. Let me bring this over and down just a little and I'm gonna staple it and then make a decision if I'm gonna use it or not. All right. Just to kind of decorate the front a little. So I have this lovely flower here and then it's sort of like a space that just feels like it needs something. I'm just not sure if this was it. <laughs> no. 
I'm going to stick it down. You guys might be screaming, no, we like it without it. But it's okay because it's just paper. And it definitely, I put it more up to that left-hand corner, it definitely will be one of a kind, right? Now, because I went, I did a touch of the green. You can see a little bit of the green. I, but I went a little more neutral. I think I'm going to just use my skinny twine for the closure. But I do want to add, I'm going to add it in this in here, I'm gonna add it with this other little journaling card. So I just have one more little card to write on in here. Is that what I wanna do? I think that will look good. And this is that nice skinny twine. And again, I'm gonna be very gentle with my button. So I hopefully do not pop it off. I am going to tie it under there. And I think one is enough. Whoa and maybe twice and then loop it down like this and I'm going to make the one you pull on long and I'm going to tie you know what I'm not going to tie a knot because we're going to put something on there all right so this one I am going to here I'm going to undo this and I'm going to tie it one more time so I feel it's a little more secure. And then I'm gonna trim it off pretty short. Okay. And then when we wrap this twice like this, like that, I am gonna put maybe a little heart. How about a little heart? Do I have my heart punch? I do, an arm's, ring, arms length. And I'm gonna just use the little teeny tiny heart and the green paper, because why not, right? This is my very ancient Stampin' Up heart punch. I doubt they still make that, but it has three cute little sized hearts. And you can punch a whole bunch of hearts really fast if you want all three sizes. And I do love that punch. So it's usually where I can get to it. All right, you know what? How about we have one side orange and one side green? That'll be fun. All right, glue on one of the hearts. I'm gonna stick it down. And I want, oh wait, if I do it that way, I'll have both green sides up. Pam, focus. All right. So now I have a green heart on that side and an orange heart on this side. And if this seems a little long, I don't think it's too long. I kind of like it like that. But you could wrap it around the button some more. And it brings a little hint of that paper here. That is cute. Now, I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And I hope you'll grab your lunch bags and just make yourself a scrappy little journal. Didn't take too, too long to decorate. And I know I had fun. I will uh, be back with more tutorials and things for you guys in the days to come. And I promise next time I will have cleared this mess off of my desk. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you watching. Until next time, have a great one.